Ow. 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 Typing properly and quickly is an invaluable skill to have. Not only can you produce scripts like the one I'm reading in no time, but also it can provide a huge advantage in many careers, especially coding. But some people just can't be bothered. I learned to type for my grandpa and he just like... You do this? Yeah. I, I still pluck. I still pluck. I still pluck. And this plucking he mentions? Yeah, that's this. And this is very wrong. Now, what's the best way to teach somebody? If you said with pain, you'd be correct. And that's why I invented the handy dandy training keyboard. It may look like a totally ordinary keyboard, but it actually has a bunch of conductive sensors under 24 of the keys to detect whether you're typing properly or plucking. And if you're typing poorly, ow. the neural network will... Ow, oh, ow. hold on, that can't be right. Yeah, it says it right here. The neural network will identify poor typing and zap zap. Plus, I added a few extra features and games to help beat the bad techniques out of people, whether you want to or not. Ow. Pain is fun. Ow. So let's go through how I built it, how it works, why the hell I used a neural network, and finally, what I'm going to do with it. But first, a message from my sponsor. You people, since no companies want to sponsor me. An enormous thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome and are helping support each and every project. If anybody else would like to support my Patreon and receive some exclusive Discord benefits and project sneak previews, the link is in the description below. Now back to the project. First, I'll get a keyboard. Uh, okay, that was easy. And then I'll get a bunch of conductive sensors, some conductive tape, and finally a prank shock pen. Lovely. The plan is to put these conductive sensors under a bunch of the keys on the keyboard so I can identify which typing technique the current typist is using. That's a lot of T's. I'll be grouping three keys to a single sensor, because I'm cheap and that's easier, and I'll wire up the shocking pen to a pair of pads on a few of the keys so that I can effectively deliver the pain. But before all that, I'll need to test and understand this pen circuit. Yeah, can't wait for that. Finally, I'll be cramming in a Raspberry Pi Zero, touchscreen, speaker, and some high power LEDs just for the fun of it. Let's get building. Hey! Awesome, first sensor is working great. So let's just finish up this hand. not so great anymore. There just seems to be a ton of crosstalk between adjacent sensors, which is really messing with the readings. This isn't too surprising if you know how these sensors work, but luckily I don't. So I guess I'll have to figure this out and get back to it. For now, the part you've all been waiting for. Shocking time. I bought these cheapo prank shock pens, which are probably going to be junk, so let's try them out. <laughs> This project is really gonna suck. So, onwards, let's tear on the pens and figure out their circuit diagram. Not so tough now, are ya? Luckily, the circuit is super simple. All I need to do is gate this circuit's power here to have control over the shocking between this electrode and ground. Cool, so this stupid thing is ready to wire up, but I guess I'll have to figure out which keys are free to wire it up to first. So, back to my first problem. Capacitive sensors, the lifeblood of modern technology. But what is capacitance? According to Webster's Dictionary, capacitance is the property of an electric non-conductor that permits the storage of energy as a result of the separation of charge that occurs when opposite surfaces of the non-conductor are maintained at a difference of potential. <clears throat> Basically, you take two conductive plates and they'll have a certain capacitance between them. But the capacitance these sensors measure is in the air, with one conductor being on the PCB and the other being my snossage. As the distance between these two conductors changes, so does the capacitance. Then, the magic pixies on the sensor's silicon are able to measure this capacitance, and if it's above a certain threshold, it will output a high signal. Cool. So, why are my sensors interfering with each other? Well, the way these pixies are measuring capacitance is by generating a very, very weak waveform over the sensor's entire pad, and then measuring the changes to the waveform caused by the increasing capacitance from my finger. And why is this a problem? Well, I have eight of these boards, 
and each board has wires going out all over the place and three different pads underneath three keys. The waveform is being transmitted all along this chain, so, as a result, the pads can sometimes accidentally talk to each other, especially if the pads under the keys are not coplanar, like this, which causes a much higher capacitance between them. So how do I minimize this? Well, yeah, I redid all of my pads and wiring to get it as clean and isolated as possible, get all of the sensors on the same plane, and additionally, as an extra measure, I bypassed this built-in PCB pad, since maybe that was picking up some capacitance from the keyboard, and after all that, tested it out, and it kinda helped, but not that much. So, like all good engineers, I'm just gonna pass this problem over to the software team, which at the time I didn't realize was also me. So with that, it's time to get artificial, as in neurals, neural networks. Sorry, it's been a long day. Now, why am I using a neural network when in a previous video I said they're so annoying and so much work or something I don't remember? Well, because in this case, it's actually really handy. Since these sensors give really random and noisy readings, I need a way to filter through that junk and figure out if the person is typing properly or plucking. So by using a neural network, I can simply collect a whole ton of training data from me typing properly and me plucking, feed all that data into a neural net, telling it which set is which, and let it compile. Then I can take that compiled network and use it to analyze the last few seconds of any typing, and just like that, it can detect plucking. Yeah. Um, I guess we should kind of do something with the signal though first, yeah? So let's hook up the little shocky bit to the keyboard. I'm just going to go online and figure out what the most commonly used keys on each side of the keyboard are. And they are, for the left hand, E! And for the right, O. Round of applause for the winners. But ha, just kidding, because these keys are actually already occupied with my capacitive sensors. So instead I'm just going to use T and Y because they're both kind of frequently used, and they don't currently have a sensor on them. Yay! So I'll go ahead and hook up the shocky and the ground wires to each key. Now you may be wondering what happens if I touch both pads at the same time. Me too. But wait, there's more. It's also a pretty terrible habit to always be looking down at your keys while you're typing. So I added LEDs. Based on the operation mode, it'll use this 20 watt LED bar strategically to discourage you from looking down or just to punish you, depends on my mood. So at this point, we have a keyboard that will force just about anybody to type properly, but typing properly isn't enough. No, 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 no. You gotta be fast too. So let's dive into all the features of the completed project. Here we have the home screen. Oh, gosh, that icon's pretty inappropriate. Thank you, much better. First, we have the training mode. This is what's using the neural network to identify your typing style. While you're using this mode, you can unplug the keyboard USB cable from the touchscreen and instead plug it into your computer, so you can just use this all the time. As long as you're typing properly, the meter will rise. But if you're typing like a monkey, it's gonna drop pretty quick. If it drops quick enough, it'll start flashing some lights, both as a warning and as a deterrent to you looking down. But if you keep typing poorly, the meter will keep dropping, and soon enough, it'll start zapping. And trust me, it's not fun. So type properly. Next up, a little game to improve your typing speed. Remember the pacer test from middle school gym? The fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test. And what I've done is implement something very similar here. It starts out with a low threshold, you just need to exceed a typing pace of 5 words per minute. Wow, I think even Reeves could manage that one. Then every 10 seconds, the threshold is increased by 5. The keyboard will continually log your rolling words per minute over a 20 second window, so if you get tripped up a little, you'll have a chance to recover. But be careful, if you start to fall behind pace, you may get a little strobing lights to let you know, and or blind you. And if at the end of a 10 second window you are behind pace, well you failed and you get zapped. A lot. But oh, it's not over yet because there's three strikes until the game ends. So keep going. And finally, after your three strikes, the game is over and you end up with your final score. Beat that, Reeves. Too easy for you? Yeah, don't worry. I made a hardcore mode. It's exactly the same as the last one, but with a twist. Every word is freakishly long, and some are super hard to spell. So, yeah, this is much more difficult. Great. 
And next up, we've got Endless Mode. This mode allows you to kind of practice typing fast, but a single incorrect word, and you get zapped. Ow. Ow. It's the perfect way to teach yourself to type fast, Ow. but without making a single mistake. And finally, a special mode just for Mr. Reeves. But if you want to see this mode in full, you'll have to convince the man himself to show you once it arrives in his mailbox. And that's about it for this project. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Gotta feed the algorithm one way or another. Next project's already in the works, so get ready for some interesting mechanical design. And until then, adios.